Hello, Keiko here, and welcome to the chaos. Let's go. What are we going to do today? Well, firstly, we will be doing Day of Story Quest as decreed by the um, <laughs> as decreed by the title of the stream. Um, but also, I noticed today this thing has shown up. Do I know what this is? No, but we might we might go give it a go. I'm wondering if I don't know. I have no idea. It might be the kind of thing I'd finish like off stream, but I figured we'd, we'd give this a go. So we might do this first, then do day of story quest. And then I guess we'll continue with the Arana requests. Do I know which quests? No, but there are so many. I guess we'll go with the cooking one. Because I think there's a lot of them, but they've sort of gone out of like, they've gone into hiding. So I don't know how to find them anymore. So uh, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, firstly, also, I'm quite excited. I know that the um, the new update's gonna come soon because they announced the special program. And that means there's gonna be the new characters, but the key part is, it's Liyue, right? You know what that means? I feel like there's a fair chance Yao Yao could be on the banner. And I know I was saving up all of my wishes for a tiny character. I have, I have a lot. I don't know if you can see, but that's 15,357. And then five of these. Um, how many of these have I got? I've got eight of these. Not quite. Um, so I was saving them up, but I have, if Yao Yao shows up on like one of these, I might have to spend all my money because I didn't do that last time. No, I tried to last time, I think. It just didn't want to give me Yao Yao. <laughs> but uh, I might I might have to because, because it's Yao Yao. Yao Yao deserves it. So <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I just think that it, there's a fair chance it would come up because it's like in theme to have Yao Yao show up. Because especially because she's connected to the Adepti and all that jazz. Um, so anyway. The what? Okay, what do you guys said? Uh, this is the real reason the universe tried to stop the stream. This blog of chicken is just too powerful. Oh, you don't think the screen is showing up? Huh. Hmm. I mean, it should be. Why, why is it not? Let me see. What does that mean? What does that mean? Hmm. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to figure out... Is it working now? Oh! Okay, well I clicked something, and something is happening, so... How do you have bingo? I haven't done anything! H how? Is me being confused? One of the things? I don't understand. I don't understand how you could possibly have bingo. Anyway, what we were supposed to be doing before I got distracted by trying to fix that um, is this. We were supposed to be going to figure out what this is. Because I don't know. I just asked you with Ito. And uh, that probably means it's going to be quite entertaining. Because he's rather a, <laughs> he's a rather funny man. So, you know, that should be exciting. Look over there by the hot pot stand. We know them. Ooh. Uh, Keiko Paimon, you're here too. Uh, Yenfei Shinobu here for some hot pot, huh? Oh, uh, what's the occasion? Ah, uh, Xiangli's cooking too hot to handle. Has all been washed up gone downhill or something? Oh, what's Xiangli's cooking too hot to handle? Uh, no, it's something like that. One well, restaurant's just closed for a couple of days. But it's nice to try somewhere different for a change. Uh, Su An Yang's hot pot is pretty good, and you can't get it at Wamin Restaurant. The Wamin's closed? Why? What happened? Well, it was partly our fault. Recently, some old classics from the Tongwen Academy got in touch and said they were organizing a get together. 
Infei's the most senior among us thus, since she's the most qualified, so she got to pick the patient and she booked one in restaurant. The turnout was a lot higher than expected, and in the space of two days, we somehow got through all of the restaurant's stock for the week ahead. Boss's enormous appetite was also a significant contributing factor. He went a little crazy. Now, Chef Mao was pretty wiped out by the end, but he had a huge smile on his face. It was the best missus he had in months. The only thing is, it'll take him at least a couple days to fully restock. Ito? Uh, Bullchuck is here too. Paimon's surprise, we haven't seen him. Those who wants to count like two sword mums. Uh, yeah, when he heard I was meeting up with some old classmates, he got very excited and decided he was coming with me. His logic was, and I quote, any classmate of Shinobu's is a classmate of mine. Notwithstanding the fact the boss has never studied a day in his life, I think he just feels that he didn't get enough chances to indulge his taste buds last time he was in the year. That other kid you guys brought with you, though, what was his name again? Oh yeah, Grandmaster Hanakado, he seems like a smart cookie. You probably didn't notice because you were busy chatting to your classmates at the time, but he was helping Chef Mao in the kitchen, trying to pick up some new cooking skills. I suspect he just wanted to learn how to make some new dish to feed his onokabuto and make them stronger. Grandmaster Hanakado? Uh, where do we know that name from? Oh yeah, didn't we meet him during that beetle battle thing that Bullchucka organized that one time? Uh, the almighty Arataki extraordinary exhilarating extreme beetle brawl? That's right, good memory, Paimon. After the near catastrophe that was the beetle brawl, Hanakado became an ally of the Arataki guy. He and Boss regularly hang out to have practice matches and discuss on a Kabuto rearing strategies. But to his credit, a lot of things he ropes Boss into doing in the name of beetle brawling actually result in Boss doing some real work for a change. It's made things a lot easier for me. For instance, they decided to spend a few days helping Chef Mao restock the kitchen, partly to thank him for the epic feast, and partly because they would like to use the opportunity to look for new ingredients to boost their on Kabuto's performance. I think they're out looking for crabs at Gugan Stone Forest right now with Miss Xiangling and Mr. Goba. They all seem to get along great. Goba's already made friends with Crimson Staff, as Ito calls it, and uh, something something Beetle King or whatever Hanakados is called. They've been out for quite a while though, shouldn't they be back by now? Unless something put them in a playful mood, in which case it's anyone's guess what kind of mess they might be in by now. Uh, well, now Paimon wants to join in the fun! Crabs in Gugan Stone Forest. Mmm, Paimon bets they taste great. Why don't we go see if they need our help? The sooner Wamin restaurant is fully stocked, the sooner we get to eat there again. And while we're at it, we can see what Bullchucker and Grandmaster Hanakado are really up to over there. Uh, well, if we're serious about eating at one main restaurant, gathering ingredients will go faster with more hands. So you two are going to head over? I think that's a great idea. Keiko, Paimon, Ito make a great, uh, make a good team. Not everyone can get through to him, but he usually listens to you two. Uh, you make a good point. Well, thanks for checking up on them, you two. Okay, I guess we're going to go to the forest. <laughs> Uh, okay, you meant to ask you last year, what it's, how does it feel to the tree for a whole year? Really weird. I think I got like a replay for some, I don't know what, what social media it was on, but I feel like I was on like Instagram or YouTube or something and it was doing one of those like one year ago today and I was looking at that like, huh, that feels so weird. <laughs> but uh, I guess that means I'd be doing pretty great though, because I would have given up by now if everything was going terribly. <laughs> I'm quite impressed. It's been a whole year and you know still going <laughs> and also that it's taken me a whole year and i'm still not up to date with this game that's also a thing <laughs> um not sure that's how it's gonna work, how that works but okay yeah i don't think so but ito <laughs> uh also do you have to go fair enough fair enough um i will hopefully see you on sunday assuming my stream doesn't kick me out again but uh, yeah have a good Afternoon slash evening, and uh, yeah, hopefully see you on Sunday. Uh, anyway, Yen Fei and Shinobu, do you have anything else to say? Ugh, I'm suddenly feeling a little bit warm. Maybe I've been eating too much spicy food lately. Oh no, you poor thing. It could be a fever, or maybe the humidity is making you overheat. Wait here, I'll go get you some iced tea. Well, that's nice. Okay, we're supposed to be going to Guyan Stone Forest, though, because crabs, apparently. I don't know if I trust... Well, I was gonna say I don't know if I trust them together with the like, Ito. And like Xiangling, I thought, oh, actually, Xiangling's a pretty responsible, but also, Xiangling's really not, though. <laughs> so, um, I hope they haven't burnt down the entire island or something, because th they would manage it. They, they really would. But hopefully they haven't. <laughs> and, uh, and everything's still intact when we get there. That would, that would be nice. Can I pick up a crab? Uh, okay. How do we... Where are they? Are they round here? 
Ah. And I feel like I should pick up the rocks. Do I need the rocks? No, but they're right here. It feels kind of silly not to grab the rocks. So let me grab, let me grab the rocks. Uh, we need to get these rocks. Can I hit them in the middle? Ah, yes. Cleat. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, another rock. I think I saw one more. Oh, more rocks. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, Idris, you have to go as well. Fair enough, fair enough. Have a good evening. And hopefully, and a good rest of the week. Hopefully, we'll see you on Sunday. Okay, where else? Oh, one more rock. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go up here. Ah, there they are. Well, some of them. I don't see Xiang Ling, and that's kind of scary. Ah, I see it now. A hard shell, a whole bunch of legs, look like a born warrior. The crab is the Onokabuto of the sea. Throw one of these bad boys in the ring and your Onokabuto will have to seriously up its game. <laughs> That's right, Oni King. Technically, the crab belongs to a different species, but it has all the qualities of the perfect warrior beetle. Hitting Onokabuto against crabs during their training is a surefire way to rapidly improve their strength. Then it's time for Crimson Staff and Ironclad Beetle King to train harder than ever before. No rest until they flipped every crab in the area onto his back. And what they're done, we'll just need to stoop down and scoop them up. No more chasing crabs all over the beach. That is one way to pick up crabs. <laughs> uh, looks like Xiang Li and Goba are a part of the gang now. Uh, <laughs> time for a Kabuto versus Crab. Uh huh, Kigo Paimon, fancy meeting you here. Are you guys out for a walk or something? Uh, hey Xiang Li, hey Goba. I thought we were going to gorge ourselves at one main restaurant, but then we ran into Yen Fei and Shinobu who told us you were closed for a few days. So we figured we'd come find you guys and see if you needed any help. Aw, oh, you guys. Uh, thanks for being such loyal customers. It's so kind of you to help. With Mr. Ito and the Grandmaster helping me for the last couple days, we've actually got most of the things we need now. What well, is left for us to get us some fresh crabs? And Crimson Staff and Ironclad Beetle King will be able to round them up for us in no time, if everything goes to plan. <gasps> uh oh. Uh oh, I may have spoken too soon. It's a Geofishup Hatchling, a Bullchucker Hanakado, watch out. Hold on, stay calm, I'll assess the situation. <laughs> I love that he just grabs a comb. <laughs> Hard shell check, legs, not too many, but it more than makes up for that with the whole rolling thing. Yeah, it looks like a mean fighter. This is what you want to train your on a Kabuto against. Ito, I'm going to just take a step back there and think about what you just said. Your little beetle's gonna get crushed? Crushed? Uh, hmm, how right you are, Oni King, with a training partner like this, and Oni Kabuto is sure to reach the apex of its abilities. Are they serious right now? Oh, uh, wait, I think I recognize that thing. It's always rolling around on a nearby island. It's made quite a reputation for itself, as far as Gyu and Gyu fish go. People have taken to calling it Crystal Tornado. Why Tornado? It's because if you ever set foot on its little island, then it wishes over and gives you a nasty whack on the head. It's really aggressive. How did you come to learn that? Oni King, allow me to send in the troops. I shall monitor the battle from a safe distance to assess our enemy's prowess. Go, oh, Ironclad Beetle King, test your challenger to its limits. Oh, that's a pretty one. It's so purple and like blue. It is confused. Oh, ah, Ironclad Beetle King. I have one hit and it's all over. I don't believe it. That's not possible. Okay, listen up, Grandmaster. The glorified pet rock is clearly tougher than it looks. Time to show it what we're really made of. From what I've seen, our opponent has a lot of brute force, but no finesse. Lugging all that weight around is a recipe for crude and clumsy attacks. And if you don't land the hit, it ain't worth squat. Luckily for us, our Nakabuto have a little thing called agility on their side. Go, Crimson Staff, dodge the limbs and tail, wait for an opening, and aim for the... quick belly <laughs> oni king shall i send in some more on a kabuto or oh, i what, what, what? 
Wait, what's Goba doing? No! Oh, he's waving! Doing a little dance! Oh, he's not angry. Before, Goba had the little, the little music notes of friendship. These are the exclamation marks of anger. Goba? Wait, the fish up can't understand Goba. I just up and left. Did you answer your question from a moment ago, Paimon? I found out about Crystal Tony's aggression. Aggressive tendencies the last time we came to gather crabs in Gunsen Forest. Tony gave Goba a big old bash on the head the moment he saw him. <gasps> oh no, poor Goba! But then Tony fell unconscious and apparently wasn't seen for weeks afterwards. I guess he's finally recovered from his injuries. My man, what a cool guy. I mean, I figured he was a pretty epic dude from just the look of him, but I've never seen someone just staring at me into submission like that. There's only one possible conclusion. This is a warrior with strength the likes of which I've never seen before. Oh, he's got the more eye, the, the Prime Gem eyes. He's excited. <laughs> I must say, I concur. I don't know how, but Goba simply commanded the hard shell beast to stand down and retreat at once. Come to think of it, he seems like a pro at catching crabs too. Hmm, Goba San clearly has some sort of power that lets him bend the minds of shelled organisms to his will. That's it, the truth has been hiding in plain sight all this time. Goba San is a virtuous Obito battler. With his skills, he can direct on Okobito's each and every move. Hmm? <laughs> uh huh, of course, yeah, that makes total sense. Haha, -ha, these are the kind of brainwaves that make you the Arataki Gang's greatest ally. If we can get Goba San to teach us the art of the shell organism mind control, we'll be unstoppable. The entire beetle fighting world will be our oyster. Stop discussing what special powers Goba may or may not have. We have to get these crabs back before too long, or they'll go bad, and then this whole trip will have been a waste. Right, get a move on, Bull Chucker. Shinobi's waiting for you. Also, we want to eat. Oh wait, when did you get? When did we get two new people? Oh, compadre! If it isn't the Oni King's right hand, and of course the flying, <laughs> sorry, sky cleaving white iron lavender melon. Oh wait, ah, oh, Madam Tommy, you saw me lose that fight just now. <gasps> So humiliating. <laughs> uh, my bad. Sorry for lurking. Oh come on, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. On a computer, don't stand a chance against the Bishop hatchling. Next time, just give it a couple of whacks with your club. But that would defeat the whole purpose. Let me explain. Now it's no secret you've kicked a fair share of butt in your time, and from what I hear, that includes some of the biggest, most powerful, meanest butt around. So how do you do it, huh? Were you born stronger than your most fierce info? No. Do you rock up to every fight believing your odds of winning are 100%? Of course not. You start with an impossible goal, defeating the unbeatable enemy. And then you do whatever you gotta do to achieve it. Because even if you can't know how much potential you have until you push yourself past your limits... Oh, because... Because even you can't know how much potential you have until you push yourself past your limits. That's how you make yourself just not just stronger, but stronger than you ever imagined you could be. Flee the fight once, or you probably flee the next time, and the time after that. Next thing you know, you're that boring little twerp who never had the guts to put himself out there. Because when you flee the fight, all you've really been running from is the person you could have become. Well, couldn't have put it better than myself. Oh, what's got into Bullchucker? He actually said something that made sense. For once, Pymon has nothing to argue back. Rumble. <laughs> you hear that? Gobert's getting hungry. Crystal Tornado has gone out. Anyway, and you're on a Kabuto, you're ready to fight again anytime soon. So, are you just going to stand here gawking, or... Chef Sama makes a good point. We are still far from being worthy enough to seek the tutelage of the mighty Sente Gobasan. Oh, he's so happy! I have heard tale of a great contest of fine warriors that was once held in this place. We sat on hallowed ground, and the very air we breathe is a buzz of the might of great duelists. I say we set up a ring here now. I shall summon the mightiest beetle battles of the year, and as an iron sharpens iron, we will hone our skills in training with them. Then only then will we be ready to seek the guidance of Gobasan. Once we have learned his ways, we will track down that shell beast and do battle against it once more. Paimon's got a, a feeling about this. Not actually sure if it's a good one or a bad one. Uh oh, oh. I'm with you, Grandmaster. You're saying the time has come to unveil the plan. This is the moment it's been. It's time for the long awaited Arataki Blazing Arm Beetle Battle Boot Camp. That's right, there's no time to lose Oni King. Let's set up the arena. You guys are supposed to be looking for crabs. Are you going to fi finish finding the crabs? Oh, no, they're gone. <laughs> what about Xiangling and her crabs? Uh, hey, we weren't done talking to you yet. Ugh, unbelievable. Look at them. Not a care in the world. Uh, Alright, we'll be fighting. 
uh, what did they say it was called again? The Arataki something something. Anyway, what sort of beetle fighting tournament? Some sort of beetle fighting tournament, right? I think Hanakado might have mentioned it before. If I wasn't so busy with work at the restaurant, I'd love to take Guba along and watch. But right now, the top priority is dealing with all these fresh crabs. Come on, let's head back. I should never was saying the Arataki gang came to Leah for a classmates reunion, right? We're throwing an impromptu beetle fighting competition to interfere with their plans. Oh, not much we can do about it except to head back to one minute and tell Shinobu. Okay, uh, back, back to the restaurant. I hope she's not too disappointed that this happened. But also, if he brought, like, the stuff, then, uh, surely he knew this was coming. <laughs> and she should have known too. There's no way. I don't believe that they could have pulled something off without Shinobu knowing. A yen fei, Shinobu, we're back. Uh, Gobus, Jungling, Keiko, and Paimon. Wait, where are the other two? Let me guess. Ito and Hanakado are up to their usual antics. Well, we'll fit you in shortly. First, I need to get all these pristine ingredients to safely sort of away. No slag, Corollas won't keep the crowds cool for much longer. Plus, Keiko and Paimon are banned. Classmates eagerly awaiting a grand feast. I'll get cooking, then we can catch up while we eat. Siang and Goba whip up a meal from ingredients collected on the trip. It's not long before an exceptional meal is served. By now, Yen Fei and Shinobu are hungry too. The feasting begins. As you dine, you tell Shinobu and Yen Fei about Ito and Hanakata's running with Crystal Tornado and the plan to hold a beetle fighting boot camp. Rataki blazing armor beetle battle boot camp? That doesn't bode well. It won't be long before things get out of hand. We're guests here, which means we're supposed to be on our best behavior. Leave them to me, I'll put us up to it. Mm, I don't know, I think it could be fun. Anyway, no stress, beetle fighting sounds like a great event idea. According to the comprehensive compendium of legal law, we just need to modify, notify the relevant office of the Ministry of Civil Affairs and they'll issue a permit pretty much right, right away. You never know, maybe we'll make some new friends with this event. Then you'll have even more people to hang out with when you next come to Liga. Ah, uh, yeah, and you can bring them all to one investment for your meals. Wait, first the event, and now you're already planning our next trip? Give the Arataki gang's financial Given the Arataki gang's financial situation. Ah, oh, come on, you gotta learn to cut them. Lose more, you came all this way, you should be focused on catching up with old friends, making some new ones, and just generally hanging out and doing lots of fun stuff. I need to be the Ministry of Civil Affairs shortly for something else. Anyway, if I can get the ball rolling for Ito's thing while I'm there. Alright, I'll handle that while you guys head back to Ito and help get the venue set up. I'll join you later and bring the permit with me. The Yenfei's in a good mood today, she didn't take any persuading to help out with the event. Uh, well, event planning's right up her alley. She wasn't officiated in the masterful chess contest and has a lot of contacts because of her work. She's also on vacation at the moment and her old friend Shinobu's in town. This definitely put her in the mood to have some fun. Well, I've missed my chance to discuss the issues of our funds. Guess I've got no choice but to deal with the boss directly now. Uh, okay, okay, Paimon, thanks for all your help so far. I promise I'll make it up to you the next time we meet. Huh, you mean you don't need us to come with you? But if Ito is serious about defeating the Geofish up hatching on Kabuto, I'm just kind of curious to see how everything goes down. Now we want to join the competition too. Now you mentioned it, didn't you help boss out a lot of the last one of these? The almighty Arataki extraordinary and exhilarating extreme beetle brawl? No, we didn't really help out, we just played a few matches, but it was actually super fun. Either way, it sounds like you understand boss's perspective far better than I do, so maybe you'll be able to help me talk and send it to him. I'll take all the help I can get. Uh, sure, or uh, you know, maybe we could just let him go ahead with it, huh? Are you talking to Goba? Hello? We've already beaten our record to turn over for this month and it's still a while before Dad gets back with the rest of the new stock, so we should be able to take it easy for a while. After that, we should go back to be back to business as usual. Things won't be anywhere near as busy as they've been in the last few days. That means we should have time to go and watch Mr. Ito's beetle fighting event. You made the same noise as the fun guy, like the little whistling thing. Uh, are you gonna let me teleport? <gasps> yes! <laughs> It lets me teleport. Perfect. I don't have to run. Uh, all right, boss. Fun time in Liyue is over. Let's head home. Should I, I, I can explain. No, you can't. Our funds have run out. We spent too long here. After buying our tickets for the boat home, the game gang fund is down to double digits. How can we possibly afford to hold a tournament? Yenfei Senpai very kindly offered to handle the legalities. Otherwise, you wouldn't even have a permit. Are you expecting her to foot the bill as well? Put a stop to this before things get out of control. But, but you don't understand, we have a situation here. 
Normally I'm happy to do things your way, but the Arataki gang's too top on a computer warrior just lost us on pet rock called Crystal Tornado. Look, we have a whole arena set up and everything. If we back out now, we'll be the laughing stock of the entire beetle fighting world. You've lost plenty of beetle fights before. Even I can beat you. I'm not even a serious player. Why are you so much bothered about losing to some fish up hashling? Shinobu, that was a low blow. Anyway, that's ancient history. I'm on the whole different le level now. There isn't a single beetle fighter out there who can touch me. I'm serious about beating that pet rock. Don't think I've got what it takes. Try me. Gladly, you want to do this the hard way? We'll do it the hard way. Grandmaster Hanakaro, get me in the boss of a leech. Maybe he'll be more amenable to reason after a crushing defeat. If I win, you have to come back with me. No complaining and no making any more trouble for Yenfei Senpai. Now, Shinobu, Oni King, I... You're really doing this, huh? I, I didn't think you'd take it this far. Okay, uh, so sky cleaving white iron lavender melon, I delegate this challenge to you. You're making Paimon fight me? <laughs> no surprises there. No surprises here either. Ito is so predictable. Well, we'll check it. <laughs> what a Fide battle. Lethal battle king. What he's really saying is if you want to fight the Oni King, you must have to go through sky cleaving white iron lavender melon first. Exacto Mundo, amigo. Sky cleaving white iron lavender melon is one of the Arataki gang's top beetle fighters, but even she is in the same league as me, moi. So Shinobu, if you want to deal with the Don, you gotta beat the melon. Except Paimon refuses. <laughs> what? Even Paimon knows you can't just expect other people to pick up your slack all the time. It's not right, so if you're out of more than tough luck, you gotta watch your spending. If Paimon helps you out, they'll just make more trouble for Yenfei, and then Shinobu will owe her a favour. Okay, true, you make a fair point. But it's all good, I have a backup plan for situations like this. We aren't really are out of funds then. I'll find a job, I'll work nights, do beetle fighting during the day, and pay any expenses out of my own pocket. It'll work, the grandmaster has helped me find a few good gigs before, as long as it's physical work and the pay is good, I'll take it. Now you're talking, see that's the kind of actually Paimon can get behind. Uh, don't rely on someone else when you can do it yourself. When you're the top dog, you gotta watch the bottom, you watch the bottom line. <laughs> I can't believe you guys. Your plan is all well and good, and I do hope you try not to be a burden on other people, but you still need to beat me first. I know what boss is trying to do is making me fight Paimon first to use up my Onokabuto stamina. Well, good luck with that. Even with the disadvantage, I'm still not going to make this easy for you. Beetle Battle Boot Camp is about to begin. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Ah. This is really weird. Ah. Our fifth battle, Shinobi's on a Kabuto now really loses to Crimson Staff under Paimon Direction. I lost. I can't believe it. That, that was so tense. Shinobi nearly got the better of Paimon there. Ah, oh, what a dazzling jewel. Hey hey, very hey hey, so can white iron lab the melon destroy Shinobu on the first attempt. You really are, not, are a natural like this, aren't you? As agreed, we now have Shinobu's official support to host the Arataki Blazing at Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp. I haven't battled in ages, guess I've had a practice. I have to move to plan B, try to keep costs to a minimum, and make sure Yenfei Senpai doesn't end up doing everything for us. I'm gonna hold you to your word, boss. Fight fun this event yourself by working nights, battle beetles, all you want during the date. And one other thing, our boat tickets home are booked well in advance. I can amend the date, but only by a few dates, so keep this event to maybe four or five other people tops. We'll run out of time, okay? I don't want you getting carried away. I got it, sure, promise, cross my heart and hope to die, should ever you've got nothing to worry about. It's gonna overrun, definitely. <laughs> okay, I'll head down to the harbour and see about changing the tickets. I'm warning you, you better not go spending all our more while I'm gone. Okay, so we've only got five battles to get in shape, enough for Gobasan. Then we've got a master who teaches us, then take down the cocky pet rock. Shinobu is asking us to do impossible here. Uh, but this is the kind of hardcore challenge I live for. Ha 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 ha. Don't worry, Oni King, I'll find people to join us in our great training endeavor. So long as there are worthy beetle battlers to be found, I'll be sure to sense their presence and I'll bring them over to our camp. We haven't been in Liyue for long, but I'm certain that this very vast line is filled with mighty warriors. We'll have no trouble finding but one of these each day. Now, as for the esteemed Oni King's right hand and honourable sky clicking white iron lavender melon, oh, we've done our part. We saved your butts by getting Shinobu to agree to this. Paimon saw the look of sheer terror on your faces. You clearly know you're clearly no match for her. Uh, we'd be conventional to show your gratitude with a gift. Surely the Arataki gang gives credit where credit is due. Oh, of course. I will uh, leave it to me. I'll come up with something. You'll get your reward. Don't you worry. 
In the meantime, if the only king's right hand is sky king white eye, lavender melon don't have any other plans, prepare to watch history in the making. Because in a few short days, I, the Bonafide Beetle Battle King, will raise my game to new heights, win the respect of Gobasan, and become a living legend. Yeah. Uh, cool, yeah, we'll be watching, so I don't pressure or anything, but if you mess us up and everyone completely wipes the floor with you, we'll see the whole thing. <laughs> She's not wrong. Uh, okay. Ooh. Instructions. Ah. Okay. Ah. So now what? Ah! Hello! Hello all, I'm Ayn Tang Tian here with an official signboard for the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Bootcamp. So double says your permit to run the event. Uh, what was it supposed to be Bull Chucker and Chris's staff? It's over the top! Oh sweet, sadly it's not my original artwork, but check out that design and that line work. It's so cool, it's epic, it captures exactly how awesome I look as a pro beetle fighter in the heat of battle. Dude, wait, not that. How do you usually address strangers in this part of the world? Uh, maybe Esquire? That's the one. Tian Esquire, your artwork is incredible. Words cannot express the Arataki gang's gratitude. You could drop the Esquire, Don Arataki. Also, I'm no artist, just a storyteller. This promotional artwork was done by a young lady at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yenfei looks out for her a lot, so when she heard about your event, she offered to contribute some artwork. Oh, so this is Yenfei's doing. Man, she really thought of everything. This is exactly what we needed. Young Grandmaster Hanakado here tells me that your bootcamp is an ambitious training program that could shape the future of beetle fighting. I'm a beetle fighter myself, but I've heard a lot about it and have always wanted to try it out for myself. Who knows, it might just give me the inspiration for a great news story to tell in the neighbourhood. Beetle fighting is something you have to have a natural affinity for. Take Sky Cleaning White Iron Lavender Melon, for instance. She battled with great prowess on her first time after only a short demonstration. Once Tian Squires grasps the basics of beetle fighting and understands the appeal, we might get a lot of free publicity from his storytelling. Ah, uh, dude, that would be awesome. Alright, squirt, squat. Uh, Squire, Squire, uh, may the best man win. Okay. Ah. Okay, we'll try try the easy one. Okay, okay. I know we literally just learned how to do this, but I already forgot. <laughs> Okay. Now what? Wonderful! I can see the Arctic Gang has transformed beetle fighting into a fiercely competitive hydro and sport. Yes, there are the rudiments of a fine tale here to be told time and again. Uh, great dueling with you, Tiana Squire. The pleasure was all right. The phrase isn't the pleasure was all mine. The phrase is the pleasure was all mine, Oni King. Ah, details. Shmi tells. Point is, thank you for supporting our boot camp. I send my gratitude to you too, Don Arctic. I intend to stay here and watch a while longer to further enrich my writing. Please pay no regard, just pretend I'm not here. Uh, man, I'm going to forget someone so cultured before my mind's buzzing from all these fancy words. What's that buzzy feeling called again? Oh yeah, learning! <laughs> oh dear, not a good sign when you don't remember the word for learning. Uh, looks like the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Boot Camp is getting off to a good start. Okay. Now, what do I do with them again? Well, our friend, have you come to take part in the Blazing Armor Police Battle Boot Camp as well? Mm, tell me about the way of the Beetle Battler. Ah, a great question. Indeed, I could go on for quite some time about this. Here has its own types of contests between insects, and like Onika Beetle Battles, each has its own unique features. For example, there are contests of agility as well as competitions to see which bug can cry the loudest. Each one of these battles has its own set of mysteries that, with a few flourishes of pen, can transform into many a tale I tell my regulars time and time again. Okay, I think that might be it. Let me let me check. Um. Ah. Okay. So it looks like the other ones will take a few more days. I'm thinking we can do this again. We can revisit this on um 
Sunday. I think that's in enough days. Wait. Oh, wait. Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, I think we should finish this on Sunday. So on Sunday, we'll, we'll try all the things. I think you might talk to each opponent before you play them. Um, but yeah. This is quite interesting. It's a different game mechanic, and every time they do one of those, it's always it's always just interesting, because it's, you know, different. I appreciate it. I like it. I like it. It was quite entertaining. I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy beetle battling, but, uh, I think it was good. In which case, that means we can go back to do what I said I was going to do, which is the Dea quest. <laughs> so, I guess we'll do that now. Where is it? Over here. But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. <laughs> I was a bit of a longer interlude than I thought it was gonna be for the beetle battling, but uh, you know what? Worth it. <laughs> it was quite fun. Okay, so, so, I wonder what this quest is gonna be about. Because Dea, we're meeting her in Sumeru, but I sort of assume we're going to the desert because it's Dea. Yeah. And then I think we just, there's one more story quest to do, which is the Yoimiya one. Which I'm looking forward to. That should be quite fun, hopefully. I don't know, Yomi is very fun, so <laughs> I just assume it will also be fun. Um, which I don't think is an incorrect assumption. But yeah, okay, where are we? Where are we going? Oh, somewhere up here. Oh, no, down. Okay. Oh, we're going to the bazaar. Okay, that makes that makes more sense. <laughs> okay, okay. Where are we? Where are we going? Oh, okay. Hmm. How am I trying to remember what else have we put on our shopping list? Oh, what a mouth watching smell. Paimo would know the aroma of biryani everywhere. Anyway, let's go get some. That wasn't on our list, was it? We can still add it to the list. Well, if it isn't Keiko, Paimo wasn't expecting to see you here. Hello there, it's been quite a while. Ah, so you two are still hanging out together? Yeah, didn't you say last time you were going to head back to the desert? <laughs> I said I was going to resign from being her bodyguard, not that our friendship was over. We're still the best of friends. The how many Yarnies are still also still post jobs from time to time. Their pay is always generous, so me and the other mercs never pass them up. I told Dare to just stay at our place when she took one of these jobs a few days ago. My parents were delighted. They even said it was always felt like we were missing someone whenever Dare wasn't around. That sounds like something they would say, all right. They are always so welcoming. Anyways, the job is already taken care of. I was going to head back to the desert brigade as soon as I finished a little shopping. But the master kept insisting I ended up, and I ended up staying another day. You can stay for as many days as you want, dear. Father hasn't even gotten around to treating you to his best dishes yet. Uh, you know, I'm not the kind of person to stay put in one place like that. My lady, don't worry though, there will always be next time. But she said they'll treat you to the best dishes. I can't believe you can still refuse that. Ah, uh, but wait, didn't you say last time you would take me on a trip to the desert? Why don't you just take me with you today when you leave? There are so many places I still haven't visited yet. I'm sorry, my lady, but no can do. There are still a few things I need to take care of back at the brigade. Besides, the desert hasn't exactly been the most peaceful place lately. Oh, come on, not this again. That's also what you said last time and the time before that. I know, I'm sorry. Just give me some more time and I promise I'll plan the best trip ever for you. Alright, fine. To be perfectly honest, it's not that I wanted to go, it's more like I feel like something is off about you lately. Ever since you first set foot on the estate a few days ago, you've been acting anxious and even paranoid. Have you been delaying our trip because you've run into some kind of trouble? Nah, are you kidding? You're worrying too much. I think she might have. I think she might have. There is kind of secret. Uh, would you swear on that? Friends shouldn't lie to each other, you know. I won't pry any further if you're willing to swear on what you just said. But if something really is bothering you, then you just tell me, you know, I'll help you however I can. Oh, it looks like Donny's was onto something. Ugh, you're too perceptive, my lady. Seems I can't hide anything from you. I just thought that nothing good could come out of telling you about the messy happenings of mercenaries. Knowing too much only leads to more trouble. Mercenary life is a doggy dog world where more reigns supreme. Everything operates on a completely different set of rules. Doesn't change anything about what I just said, though. You're st we're still friends. I can only support you if I understand what's bothering you. My lady, you're not gonna stop until you drag it out of me, are you? All right, I'll share what I know. Let's go somewhere else first. This isn't exactly the best place for a discussion. Okay, let's talk here. Just trying to draw any extra attention. 
As you may already know, the Eremites have both a lot of mercenaries and a complex organizational structure. Many mercs are no different than me, just going around looking for jobs to earn some more. My brigade is called the Blazing Beasts. We're not a large group, but every member is loyal and brave. However, not all Eremite brigades are like mine. Some are willing to cross all kinds of lines for the sake of Mora. For most of the tourists is a faction known as Deshra's Relics. Deshra's Relics? Judging from the name, they must really look up to... King Deshra? Yep, you got it. I've heard that you've already crossed paths with Ainal Lamar. They're one of the groups under the Relics Anna. Oh, you mean the group that tried to sell us the Divine Knowledge Capsule? Yeah, they weren't friendly at all. Nesha's Relics is composed of many smaller brigades like Ainal Lamar. The Relics Headquarters issue orders to all brigades under its control. On any other day, I would want nothing to do with them. Unfortunately, though, the brigade that's stirring up trouble now is none other than Dakan Alamar. Dakan? I think it means beard or something. Believe me, it's a really stupid name. I found it insufferable for years. Anyway, the real issue is that Dakan Alamar is led by my father, Kasila. Say what now? I think I was trying to understand your anxiety now, but what did they do? I won't go into details, my lady, but they've been involved in a lot of violent incidents. We're talking hundreds. Hundreds? Yep, the scenes tend to be quite gruesome too. They shook the victims of all their valuables before murdering them. Yeah, that's not a great legacy to have. Not only have they targeted merchant caravans and ordinary citizens, but other mercenary brigades as well. That's beyond terrible. They won't even spare their own kind. I don't know how Deshus Relic sees it. All I know is that Khan Alamar have been more and more aggressive over the last few years. If I don't do something about them, then even my brigade or the people of Aru Village could become the next target. <sighs> I just wish I knew what's driven him to that. Yeah, how can your father do such terrible things? I don't know, people change. He's always been pretty pathetic, but at least in the past there were still a few lines that he wouldn't cross. That's setting the bar pretty low. I mean, if he was even remotely decent, then why would I have to leave the brigade and cuddle ties with him? He was loud and foolish, but no real sense of purpose. Instead of doing anything useful, he spent most of his time drinking and chasing after women. Of course, the other brigade members were just like him. Their rockets would go on night after night. It was like a nightmare. What about your mother? Did she ever step in to stop them? Unfortunately, I never knew my mother. Ah, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't know. It's alright, my lady. That's pretty common in mercenary circles. When I mentioned my father was chasing after women, I was a result of one of those encounters with some random person. He told me I wasn't sure who my mother was, in any case, she never came to see me. It said, you'll be fine as long as you remember to stick with dad, but even then he left most of the presenting parenting to the brigade. The one thing I do remember is that he used to tell me stories. The problem was that he had a terrible taste, he only knew a few stories and even those tended to be pretty stale. They were tales of desert warriors defeating dragons in the forest or stories of mercenaries rescuing princesses from rebel armies. Sounds like a typical fairy tales. More or less, yeah. They were interesting maybe the first or second time around, but after 20 repeats, they started to get a little dull. He seemed to think that those stories were the best things ever, though. He was so into them that he'd call the whole brigade over and make them perform the whole thing as a play. Even the toys he gave me would be story props. I'd get helmets, shields, and toy swords. It was only much later that I realised the shows were more for him than they ever were for me. What an interesting guy. It doesn't sound like he had all bad intentions. Yeah, I've always found him pretty childish, but that was something I could just throw off. I had no reason to despise him. Until I grew up and learned the true face of desperate relics for myself. Looting, blackmail, violence and fraud, they not only accepted such heinous acts, they would even openly boast about them. No one in the brigade was any kind of hero. Instead, my father and his cronies were more like the bad guys and needed to be taken down. Did they really think that as long as they didn't do any of the stuff right in front of me, I would never know? I think I can understand your feelings. The difference between perception and reality must have hit hard. Yeah, but don't worry, my lady. It's all water than the bridge now to me. I had an argument with my father and left that place behind for good. I'm not investigating them due to any bitter feelings I still have towards my father. I just want to protect those that are close to me. I just want to find out why they suddenly started causing so much more trouble. Yeah, I told the boys to gather as much information as they could. Most of the reports concerned violent incidents, but there's also some talk of smuggling. I see, but isn't this investigation incredibly dangerous? It is, but every mercenary lives life on the edge. It's a lifestyle that I enjoy. It may be true, but it'll be impossible for those who care about you not to worry. Well, now you get why I don't want to share any of this with you. Uh, what should we do? They both have valid consents. Um, I'll go to the desert with you, Dea. Huh? But there's a need for you to get caught up in this mess too. 
Well, she's super tough. If she were to go to the desert with you, then Paimon bets the problem would be solved in no time. Hmm, I'm inclined to agree. I'd feel a lot more at ease if you took her along to help. You can count on me. I'll wait for news from you in the city until then. Please stay safe. I'm honored you care so much about me, my lady. Alright then, let's get moving. Our first stop will be Caravan River, where we can catch up a bit with my fellow mercs. Ah, so we are going to the, the desert, and it sounds like we're gonna fight a massive brawl and win. <laughs> That's the impression I've been getting. Uh, please be careful, Athlem City, and wait for news from you. Just don't do anything reckless, alright? We will. I'm sorry. We, we will do something reckless. As hard as they try not to, it's gonna happen. I sure hope they'll be okay. I hope so too. I hope so too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we will be okay though, because A is pretty strong and so are we. So, we'll make it out. <laughs> uh, you're working there for far too long. I think people are very tongueless a lot more now. Okay, let me, let me have a go. The best beetle battler is Betty the Butcher Battler, who battles beetles before breakfast out beyond the blue beach every day. A bottle blue beetle ba Bertie is the battle beetle both Betty and her brother Billy bring to battles because he battles better than all the other battle beetles. Yeah, I could not say that fast. <laughs> it would not end well. Uh, hey day, you're back. Are those two friends of yours? It's a pleasure to meet you. I trust day with my life. Oh, so you've already become like one of us then? Huh, <laughs> that's good to know. Anyway, since you've got newcomers, let me fill you in on what Dark and Alamar has been up to lately. They've become extremely aggressive. Apparently, even their own now have become acceptable targets. They even attack other relic brigades, which is the same as any other mercenary brigade. Even the most ferocious beasts still protect their own. It sounds like they've thrown them straight to the wind. That's right, once they've collected enough loot off the other mercenaries, they sell it off to a different brigade to turn up to merchants on the black market. A portion of the profits is immediately exchanged for more food and weaponry to be used in the next violent operation. That's terrible! Yeah, and it really makes you wonder why they're so desperate for more. A few days ago, Hisham and I traded them for a while and even disguised some merchants to conduct trade with them. We were able to learn a few things from the exchange. Rather than saying they're out to plunder and hold more, I'd probably be more accurate to say they're experiencing an internal power struggle. Wait, a power struggle? You heard me right, the vast majority of their victims are mercenaries from the other brigades of Destrous Relics. If their only goal was more, they would have gone after it. Could have gone after anybody. The targeted nature of their attacks points to a power struggle between the different brigades within the relics. That's the only plausible explanation we have. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find out anything more specific. It seems they're also trying to keep things under wraps. Oh, one last thing we discovered was that over the past few years, as Dhaka and Alamar became more and more active, Deshret relics as a whole became a lot weaker. They would cause so much damage? That's mighty strange to me, too. Haran, you can leave the rest of the investigation to us. But to say though, I didn't expect you to go on a whole undercover mission during the few days I was gone. Sounds like you were really putting your necks on the line, no? Nah, it was nothing. We were just as concerned about the situation as you are. Dakar al is your father's crew, after all. Huh, what do you said? Besides, Daya, haven't you done more dangerous things than all of us combined? What we did is nothing compared to your experiences. Uh, yeah, and while they went to talk with Dakar al I took a look at the last camp they attacked. Any survivors of the attack were already long gone. There was nothing of value left in the camp. Ah, Hisham and Khalif, Kali you're here too. We rushed over as soon as we saw you come into Caravan River. Although this new friend of yours looks a little green behind the ears, I'm sensing a special vibe from her. Now that we know you'll have a capable partner with you, we can also rest easy. Uh, hey, what about Paimon? Feel anything special? Uh, you're also planning to tag along with them? Of course, Paimon is the traveler's most important guide. Wherever she goes, Paimon will follow. Oh, in that case, you better take care of her too, dear. Uh, don't underestimate Paimon. Don't worry about her. She may look tiny and helpless, but she's been through just as many battles as the Traveller here. Even if she'd only survived from sheer luck, then that alone would still make her quite formidable. Uh, I had no idea. Guess I shouldn't judge my appearances. Oh, one other thing, dear. When you're free, why don't you update the deputy about your upcoming schedule? We had another recruitment event a few days ago, but everyone only came to see the flame mate. You went around at the time, so people were pretty disappointed. They only find our crew of rough, unkempt guys. The deputy put a lot of effort into the event, but it was basically for nothing. Only a few people chose to stay, and they really got that really got to him. Ah, sorry to hear that. I'll be sure to bring him some great liquor next time. I left in a hurry, and I couldn't make it back in time for the event. But admit, I can understand the disappointment, though. You're a brigade's main selling point, after all. 
Now, if any of the deputies you can figure out a way to bring a few more spoken hot members into our ranks. No, that is not the solution. <laughs> ah, I keep dreaming. Remember the last time I invited a couple gals into the brigade? You all just froze up with your mouths gaping like a bunch of scarecrows. Your good science and weird expressions left quite the impression on them. They were originally interested in joining us, but after that, they both told me they were too uncomfortable to stick around. Hey, didn't we agree to never bring that up again? Oh, wait, are you serious? Why have I never heard about this? I don't think you were a part of the brigade yet. Are you kidding me? I missed a once in a lifetime moment like that, and you weren't even going to tell me? All right, all right, we can tell you about it later. Now's not the time. Why don't you go try and change the subject? You and Sean, get your butts over here and tell me everything right now. <laughs> His face. <laughs> he looks so concerned. Oh, and they're off. Are they always like this? Yeah, more or less. There aren't any rules or graces when it comes to mercenaries. We used to just speaking our minds. <laughs> if someone's putting getting under your skin, you just yell right back at them. If that doesn't put an end to it, then you just challenge them to a fight. We also don't tend to take many. <laughs> we don't tend to take too many things too seriously. Redirecting, getting it on your system as soon as things come up is better than keeping everything bothered up and never talking about it. This is why I never spare their feelings when I talk to them. If I want to laugh, I'll laugh. If I'm angry, then I'll unload on them. It's hard to stop once you get used to it, though. I can never do that when I'm with the Hamianis. Uh, hey, knuckleheads, can you at least tell me the rest of the intel before you go back to your bickering? Uh, yeah, you hear, Kalov? Told you we gotta focus on the investigation first. <clears throat> As you have a map, right, here's the spot. There you'll find the merchant caravan responsible for getting rid of the Khan Alamar's losing kids. All you gotta do is wait and ambush them in the evening. They'll have no idea what hit them. Perfect, thanks for that. Be sure to pass my regards to everyone else in the brigade as well. Uh, will do. Stay safe. There you go. You, you got anything else to say? Now, like I said, the two ladies Daya brought with her were also super max. I'm talking some le same level as flame main here. You should have seen it, the aura of the two of them when they were standing together. It was incredible. I was just at a loss for words, that's all. So pathetic. Hey, shut up. <laughs> have we... You got anything to say to the heater? Uh, come on, you can only trap. Just, just trash like this because you weren't there. Oh, okay, what about if I... And like this. The minute you would have frozen up just like everyone else if you were there. How could I have missed a moment like that? <laughs> These guys are so silly. Thanks for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see me play live, then check out my Twitch channel. You can find me on Wednesdays and Sundays at 8pm GMT. Thanks again and have a great day.